Roguelike games can be described as a lot of different genres and there's a lot of different words you can describe them with. Action-packed, adventurous, turn-based combat, dungeon crawlers, addicting. Really, you can just name stuff for hours on roguelike games alone. But there's one word that you really don't describe a roguelike game with, and that's cozy. When you think of cozy, you think of games like Stardew Valley, Animal Crossing, Minecraft. Really, the entire farm simulation genre falls under that category. And really, for me personally, I don't play these games a whole lot as I tend to get bored pretty fast. But lately, I've been playing a roguelike game and it's really become my go-to cozy game as of late. And that's Dome Keeper. It was fully released on September 27th of 2022 after about a year or so of development. I assume it's a year of development as the first post about Dome Keeper on Steam was made in August of 2021. And at the time, it was called Dome Romantic, which means romance in English. It was originally developed for the Ludom Dare 48, which was a contest to create a game in 72 hours or less. That version of the game is still available to play online, and let me tell you, the Steam version is so much better, but the initial design and development, the game is still pretty cozy. Now, the developers as a whole is a team of two people who go by Bippin' Bits, who have made one other game called Of Mice and Moggies, which is a cute looking animal puzzle game. But Dome Keeper is definitely their major success game, and it's a much cozier game, I'd say. So what's it about? Well, let's get into that. As usual with my videos, I'll tell you everything you need to know about the game, and then I'll give you my experience with it. I'll tell you how it's the best cozy roguelike game out there as well. But firstly, let's talk about all the options the game has before you even start a run. The first screen you get gives you all different options for the type of dome you have, which as a record in this video is two with the laser and sword dome. This changes what type of weapon it is, and really, I've had a lot more fun with the laser dome compared to the sword, but both are quite fun to use. The character you play as is the engineer, as the other character they have listed, the assessor, they're not available yet. I'm not sure what a different character would do, but the engineer feels just fine and balanced as they're the only character available. Pet and skin options, on the other hand, are just cosmetic changes so you don't really need to worry about that but the gadget they give you at the start of a run is very important and the best starting gadget in my opinion is the shield which is just bonus health for your dome that recharges automatically between every wave of attackers but then you also have the repellent which delays the next wave of attackers but it has a somewhat long cooldown and then there's the orchard which i have yet to unlock in my 11 hours of game time but so far the shield is definitely my favorite option as it feels much more consistent and more reliable later in a run compared to the repellent my couple runs with the repellent did not go as well compared to a shield run but maybe it's just because i know how to use the shield a lot more the last option they have is which mode you can choose they have relic mode which has you traverse the underground looking for a relic and the game ends once you get that relic or your dome runs out of health choosing this option will give you another window of options which allows you to change the difficulty map size and even add some modifiers to the game that tend to be neutral no matter what like the quick and feeble option has the monsters move a little bit faster but they have less health now relic hunt is the traditional mode and the one I've had the most fun playing, but I have been playing more of prestige mode as I feel it adds an extra layer of difficulty with it being an endless game where you send as many resources back to your home planet before your dome falls or before you leave the planet. This one is much harder as it doesn't seem to have a set difficulty, but it feels a lot harder than a normal difficulty run in terms of upgrades. In prestige mode, I feel like the resources are a lot more limited compared to my normal difficulty runs on Relic Hunt, but that's not really a big deal. As of recording this video, that's all the options and game modes outside of a run. It's pretty simple stuff and I assume the devs will add more as they seem to be pretty consistent with their updates. But what about inside of a run? Let me tell you, that's also pretty simple and I'm going to do my best to explain everything that you need to know. A run starts off with your dome crashing and immediately you're allowed to start mining, which is the very cozy part of this game. I promise killing the enemies is also pretty cozy, don't worry. While mining, you have three different resources you collect and all these resources are used to upgrade your dome, which you can upgrade anytime you want. Upgrades include upgrading your dome's health, relics you find, your character as a whole, and upgrading your dome's weapons. Along with that, you can buy quality of life changes like seeing how long until the next wave of attackers, how much health your dome has, and how many resources you currently have. They're usually really cheap, and in a normal run, you want to buy them early on. While you're not mining resources, you'll go back up to your dome to fight these shadow monsters that want to kill you. Every single wave, you get to fight more of them, and they seem to get stronger, so you need to balance your upgrades between your character, your weapon, and your dome so you don't get destroyed too fast. That's really the gist of any run, whether it be prestige mode or relic hunt. You just dig down, get resources, and upgrade stuff. It's really addicting, trust me. The underground is broken up into sections by color that indicate levels basically and each level contains a relic which is basically a buff for your run the relics can include a lift so resources are automatically brought to the dome a probe that allows you to see where resources are with a single click of a button or you could even have a pet dinosaur named drobert who helps you mine wherever you place it the relics are really fun and being able to upgrade them makes it even more fun you see the runs are really simple you gather resources you upgrade stuff and you fight 
some enemies, but it's really addicting. The relic hunt runs can last anywhere between 30 minutes to two hours, depending on what map size you do. It's just a great fun roguelike game that came out of nowhere. I have loved this game every time I've picked it up. I personally have been able to clear Relic Hunt on every map size on normal difficulty and still feel incentivized to play as it's just a lot of fun gathering resources and upgrading the dome. I don't feel a lot of desire to play this game on any harder difficulties, which is weird for a roguelike game that I love. It's just a really cozy game for me, unless an achievement was locked behind beating the game on a certain difficulty. But from what I've seen, you can get every single achievement on normal mode, which is pretty nice. Most of my playtime has been on Relic Hunt as the largest map alone took me over two hours to complete. But that doesn't take away from prestige mode at all. The endless run, that's all about getting the highest score possible. I've only played it for a few runs, but it's a very nice alternative to the usual Relic Hunt. It's nice learning what every weapon or dome does and trying to master it inside the run. The game has a lot of updates planned, I feel. And the two devs do post a good amount of stuff on Steam to keep the community up to date on everything. Like I said, I love this game and hell, it's probably a top five roguelite of the year for me. I made this video one game too early, it seems. But with all these positive things, I personally don't have anything negative to say about it. I will point out a couple things that some people will say is a negative and some people will probably experience while playing it. But for me, nothing bad has happened. I feel some people will say there isn't much replayability to the game as the runs don't change that much. It's nice that each dome and relic has its own upgrades, but in reality, the runs stay pretty similar. And I do know some people would probably not be a fan of that. But if you want to get into roguelites more, but you still want a cozy time, then this game is still the best cozy roguelike game I've ever played. It's truly only negative that I've experienced is the price. The content it has is truly a lot of fun and it's exciting to see what the devs plan to add, but the price is something that will scare some people away as it's about 20 us dollars i got my money's worth easily but i do know people will see the graphics or watch it on twitch and have a hard time justifying the purchase but outside of that there's not really any glaring negatives and definitely none that i've experienced of course everyone is different and one thing i like you might not like at all but overall this game does it great addicting gameplay great music that enhances the atmosphere of the game the ability to easily enhance the difficulty if you desire really it's a fantastic pickup for anyone and i'm glad i picked it up or really my friend gifted it to me so i didn't have to pay for this game they just gifted to me saying hey i think you'd like this game and as always they were right shout out to brendan on that one and shout out to you for watching this video i really do appreciate it i'm trying to make larger and bigger projects when i can but every once in a while it's fun to make a video on a game that's just a nice little indie game and this game really surprised me and i'm glad that i played it also huge shout out to the people that support me on patreon really appreciate the patience as i'm one guy working on all these videos and streaming when i can but i appreciate the support on patreon twitch and of course this website thanks for watching again and i'll see you next time